the Black Mafia family, a drug trafficking and money laundering operation established back in 1985, was soon by the late 90s and early 2000s said to have allegedly raked in over 270 million over the course of their operation. And that was off the back of Demetrius Big Meats Flannery and his brother Terry Southwest T. Flannery. But soon, by the mid 2000s, it all came crashing down as the whole Black Mafia family was soon incarcerated and it all completely fell apart. And in the two decades plus since the takedown of BMF, there has been a lot of talk and speculation of what was the true downfall of the family. In this video specifically, we're going to focus on the flashy and stylish lifestyle of Big Meech, which some say was the catalyst to the downfall as it put all eyes on BMF. And with the upcoming season 3, of BMF around the corner we see the move to Atlanta that sparked BMF to expand across the nation and some people believe sparked the downfall of these brothers with them going worldwide and implementing cocaine distribution deals in almost every major city and this is what put BMF on the map but also took them right off so in this video we discuss what people believe to be the downfall of Big Meat. Now, with the new prominent BMF show, we get somewhat of an accurate depiction of what it was like for the Flannery Brothers coming up in Detroit. The reason I bring up this series is because at the beginning of each episode, we get quotes from both Big Meech and Southwest T that lets us in onto the mindset that they had growing up and why they chose the path they chose, or as they would like to tell it, the path chose them. They didn't really have much options. With Meech, of course, saying, we didn't choose the hustle. The hustle chose us it was the only way to better our living situation and end poverty right then so meech and his brother t started selling drugs in the late 80s when they were still in high school due to their family's financial struggles they wanted to find a way to get it and help out to make ends meet so they hit the streets and they said they wanted to do it without having to rob or kill anyone they saw it as simply supply and demand i got it you want it and that was the route they chose to go they became known as the 50 boys because they began selling 50 dollar bags of cocaine on the streets of Detroit on their early come up. They were working under a guy named E.D. Boyd who soon left the game and retired early. Meech and Terry, they wouldn't take that route, not then, not ever. It wouldn't be smooth sailing straight to the top for the Flannery brothers though, as they were said to get into a lot of beef and wars, most notably with a guy named Layden Simon, who you guys probably know of as Lamar in the BMF show. And from all this beef and war in Detroit, there was multiple instances of gunfire fights even with southwest t getting shot in his eye and meech getting shot and rushed to the hospital these boys got it up the mud and made it all the way to the top being deemed as the kings of detroit but to me big meech he wanted way more he wanted to expand his horizons and so he set foot outwards outside of detroit and outside of michigan now the quote that stuck out to me the most was from big meech of course saying the ambition is getting money past the king of the d i wanted it so we could spread our wings we could go anywhere we wanted without being seen and this perfectly represents his move to atlanta because this is a double-edged sword him saying we could go anywhere we wanted without being seen would be next to impossible for what they had planned and store for themselves and a the black mafia family now what meets leaving detroit he needed a way to set up shop everywhere else and to do that it was said that he would just go to a bunch of clubs and spread the wealth it was hard to not notice his presence when he's dropping hundreds of thousands of dollars at the club each and every night like it was the literal expression of you gotta spend money to make money he was willing to give up all his money to set up all these different cocaine operations and all these different spots and he was gonna make it back tenfold and it got so far that people even credit him for being the one to start throwing money in the club people feel like he invented that or he at the very least popularized it and that's why it still goes on today and i always remember a quote i heard by 50 cent before the bmf show even came out and he talked about how if your pockets open people are always around because when you can find your pockets people like you around <laughs> right can't buy champagne because you bought all of it <laughs> <laughs> they start to have to speak to you it was big meat world and everyone else was just living in it as he grew in fame and fortune he wanted more and in the year 2000 he started bmf entertainment a talent agency and also a record label taking artists under his wing and you can see he has ties with a huge artists such as ti gz trina 
Jeezy, and way more. They became a staple in the music industry and respects even still to this day. At this point, BMF was just continuously rising up the ranks, getting higher and higher and higher, which Big Meech said back then that he never even expected that he'll have so high of a hill to fall from, which he inevitably did. But prior to that, they had complete control and operations from Los Angeles all the way to Atlanta, with their other two subsidiary shops being in St. Louis and Detroit. And with all that taking place, it was said there was moving over 100 kilos per month throughout this entire organization so while all this was going on with Meech in atlanta garnering more fame southwest t was in la meeting with the mexican cartel making sure everything was running smooth and this brings me to another quote said by Meech, saying my brother and i were too determined and destined to be the best to ever play the cocaine game money became our addiction being able to buy whatever the fuck we wanted and that was definitely the truth it was alleged that they both had tens of millions at the time of their arrest and could have left the game at any point unfortunately decided not to so i think at this point the new lifestyle they built and created was so far from where they started it was just impossible to let go also they were seen as like pioneers not being as like the first niggas in the game but arguably the first to take it to the height that they did and to also have the cultural relevance and impact that it still does to the point that we're getting a whole show on it i believe there's a whole lot of truth in what i'm saying and as we read more of the quotes from big meech and southwest t i think it explains it perfectly with southwest t saying once you taste the game you never lose that sensation it's like a rush of adrenaline to them which makes sense because i mentioned in a prior quote how big meech talked about it being an addiction to getting money to winning ultimately and i think they both suffered from that and it caused them to stay in the game or when big meech said we come from a god fearing household the bible in our living room was always open to the same verse we was just poor as shit which caused all this other drama so i think he says that to say like i mentioned earlier they are so far from where they grew up they didn't really have no options this is the path that they chose and it was the path they was gonna die on they were trendsetters as meech said what was going on in the d wasn't happening everywhere young black dudes hustling in detroit were trendsetters nationwide our series needs to absolutely show that so at this point southwest t and big meech were larger than life and meech he took it to another level with the creation of bmf entertainment and being so much into the music industry it was bound to all eventually fall apart and it did in november of 2003 prosecutors and the feds thought they hit gold when on november 11 p diddy's bodyguard named anthony wolf jones and his childhood friend lamont res gurdy were shot to death behind a buckhead nightclub and it was said that meech was the one who pulled the trigger so now more eyes was on meech than ever but the whole trial coming sooner or later that fast lifestyle was soon catching up to him meech was actually shot in this altercation as well but as soon as getting released he was arrested by the police in suspicion of having committed this double homicide but due to lack of evidence they had to let him out on bond and then over the years this case just got dropped as the feds and prosecutors couldn't put it all together so meech once again was out free and this should have been a point of emphasis for him to probably let all this shit go but he didn't here we go to the indictment bringing down both big meech southwest t and the whole black mafia family who they said at the time had over 150 plus members working under them across their whole operation the so word on the street was t and big meech weren't really seeing eye to eye anymore at this point and everything was pretty much divided which is why meech was in atlanta and t was in la and as things split more and more apart i guess t got fed up with meech's new flamboyant lifestyle putting them all on the radar but actually it turned out to be t who took them all down as he was caught on so many wiretaps like they was recording this nigga for forever and he just didn't know so while a lot of people suggest that meech's attention seeking is what put them on his radar southwest t or wiretaps was a big help in taking all of them down it was said that they was able to accumulate over 900 pages of transcripts in the wiretaps they had on southwest t which also confirmed that him and meech were on the outs or at least having some type of beef around the time with southwest t saying things like we don't even speak 
he lost his mind or he's mad at me he's letting the motherfuckers put that shit in his head he don't even know why he is mad so that basically confirmed that the brothers really weren't on the same page towards their inevitable demise but honestly the wiretaps and the transcripts were just the straw that broke the camel's back the empire was already beginning to crumble right from under them and i honestly don't know if big meech or southwest t even noticed when you make it this high up the mountain it's kind of impossible to pull everyone up with you and when you have over 150 to 200 members that you're calling all family it's impossible for all of them to be solid maybe for the first 10 to 15 but as you expand across the entire nation it was almost inevitable that someone was gonna crack or fold under the pressure and give up big meech and southwest t and that's exactly what started to happen in 2003 a new task force was put together and it only took them a span of two years to put everything together that they needed to take down bmf and that was just for people to start breaking the code of silence so first we have in april of 2004 a courier named jabari hayes was pulled over in missouri he was reportedly swerving over the fog line and when he checked the car they found cases approximately 100 kilograms of cocaine and they found all these compartments of where the money was hiding so then it was soon learned they had hidden compartments inside limousines cars rvs to transport cocaine and money over state lines city to city then we move on to september of 2004 where a wiretap caught a guy named Raphael smurf allison who was just a low-level drug dealer in atlanta but he soon connected them to a bigger drug dealer named hoskins who then folded like a long chair and ratted out his two brothers omari mccree and jeffrey lear not even two months later jeffrey lear pulled over with his girlfriend in atlanta due to the wiretaps they had on hoskins and smurf they only found a duffel bag about 10 kilograms of cocaine so they released them in an attempt to gain and garner new information so lear and mccree the two brothers decided they had to go on a run scared of what bmf would do for all the loss of cocaine and losing all that money but they were soon then picked back up in early 2005 and then named Demetrius Big Meech Flannery as the source of all the cocaine and also taking down one of his associates, Tad Brown, who supplied them with it on behalf of Big Meech. So now by October 2005, Big Meech and Southwest T along with 40 other members were all indicted on drug related offenses and with the help of furthering the enterprise that was BMF hiding under BMF Entertainment record label but really being a drug trafficking organization and with this taking place as members started to drop and fall it was said that at the height of the powers bmf employed over 500 different people but i believe only 150 were arrested among this indictment now with all the evidence stacked against them and big meech and southwest t possibly facing life in prison also with a lot of their homes and money and assets being seized by the feds a lot of their friends family who had houses in their names was taken away from them they decided to plead guilty for a lesser sentence not to get life and to get their family out of any of these possible charges and with that taking place they both agreed to do 30 years for a continuing criminal enterprise and conspiracy to launder monetary value now we did break down the bmf family as a whole but this video is more so to look at Big Meech and how people talk about how his flamboyant lifestyle was a big factor in them inevitably being taken down which I can't see from a certain perspective, but if we look at it from a logical aspect, he didn't really give them any evidence of his own. Like I said, Southwest T got caught on over 900 transcripts, all in the span of only five months. And then we had other people cracking and folded under the pressure, snitching, it wasn't really much he could do about it. So while you can say him being in the spotlight, all the glitz and glamor, getting help in a lot of aspects, he never really gave them anything concrete to look Look at him for he still did everything under the table and him going to the clubs would actually help him because he was doing business face to face it word wasn't getting out there whereas southwest t doing business over the phone inevitably took them down once and for all but even after that the cultural relevance and impact of bmf would not be forgotten as i mentioned earlier we get the new bmf tv show that lets us know the background information that we would probably never receive depicted as accurately 
as they possibly could without going into too much detail and big meech himself is even played in a series by his own son demetrius lil meech flannery jr as well as meech going on to be mentioned in so many rapper songs and verses about how much of a hustler and big dog he was and then it's not all doom and gloom for the flannery brothers either with southwest t getting released in 2020 due to the coronavirus sickness in the prisons he got released early while big meech did try to push for the same thing he was denied but he is set to come home soon i have been seeing conflicting theories saying he could possibly come home this year in 2024 but i know at the latest he will be home in 2028 which is a far cry from the 30 years or the life they're willing to give him overall that's it for this video it actually took a lot of time to gather all this information and all these pictures and evidence and all this and that so if you guys could leave a like comment and subscribe i really appreciate it but also i'm interested to hear your thoughts and opinions on this whole situation what do you think was the downfall of bmf while i do think for a drug dealer meech was a little bit flashy i also do think he like i said he didn't really do anything that got them caught up he gave them no evidence to bring him down so i can't really blame him at the end of the day and meech himself he will tell you i don't think he has no regrets about what he did from where he came from in poverty that the 20 years he did spend on top of the world i think he more than think that was worth it and appreciated it and then with his son carrying on his legacy in a bmf name i think he couldn't be more than proud of what he was able to achieve with all that happening i don't blame beach his style was flashy but like i said t got caught on the phones and when your family gets that big it's inevitable a lot of the pieces just won't fit and people are just gonna start running their mouth and of course that's what turned out to happen i think for any crime family it's only a matter of time once you get to the level that someone like bmf was on while also being in the spotlight and i do think the fact that they're even able to get out of jail take 30 years so was he already been out and big meech set to release soon is a blessing in disguise because the crimes and acts they committed most people were suspected that they got life in prison but once again that's it for this video i appreciate if you leave a like comment and subscribe bmf season three is like a week and a half away at this point i'm gonna be dropping videos and recaps episode to episode explaining what's going on comparing it to real life things they changed things they didn't so if you want to check that out be on the lookout for that and i'm out